I'm making a game inspired by Mario Kart, Crash Bandicoot, and Grand Mountain Adventure. Welcome to Devlog 5. While wrapping up work on my last video, I had a particular problem that was really weighing on me. The thing is, testing multiplayer with friends was fun, but this seemingly massive course flew by in about 50 seconds. So when you got to the bottom of the mountain, there was kind of a sense of, oh, that's it? Now you might suggest some form of lap mechanic like Snowboard Kids does with its ski lift, but to me this sounds like more of a workaround than a feature, and it really doesn't fix the map's other main issue, which is that it's kind of unmemorable. When you play Mario Kart, you're like, oh, this is the part where you're driving over the icy lake, or oh, this is the part where you're driving through a pinball machine. If I want to make a memorable level fit for a party game, I need to start work on a map that has unique moments, epic scale, and a sense of adventure. So after a bit of deliberation, I decided that I need to scrap my existing workflow entirely, and instead of building the track around the mountain, I was going to build the mountain around the track. And so I did something I haven't done in a while, and I stepped away from the computer and just spent time daydreaming about what features I'd like to include. Then I started drawing it out, and I went through quite a few iterations, but after a while I did find something that I thought could make a pretty good blueprint. You'll see more about these different sections later in the video, but this was the basic idea. Between all the new features I would have to build and all the existing features that would be broken by this new map, I had a lot of work to do. So I got started. So I dropped the map blueprint into Blender, and the very first thing I did was make sure that the scale was just right. I want to make sure that the path you ski on is wide enough to fit eight people, but still narrow enough that it's hard to avoid each other. Then I used the outline of the course and plotted out a curve that I could use to create the base geometry for the track. I did have to make some changes to certain parts of the map so it could keep a pretty consistent slope and build a mountain around it that made sense. After adjusting the height of the track, I started sculpting the terrain around what I had so far. These are just some broad strokes that I'm doing so I can get a sense of what the mountain looks like when I bring it into Unreal. So then I did some playtesting just to see if the angle of the track made sense and gosh, skiing down this big white featureless blob, it almost felt like I was starting the game from scratch. I continued chipping away at the structure of the mountain until I got to this cave area, and that's when I realized what else I'd broken. So when the player is moving down the track, I need to keep a record of everywhere their skis have ever been so that I can render the ski trails into the snow. How I've been doing this so far is by constantly writing to a giant 2D texture that maps directly to the XY space of the mountain. However, a problem arises at this overpass area. When the player skis over the top area, you'll see that ski trails are simultaneously written to the area below. This is because the top and bottom sections occupy the same space in that 2D texture, and the result is that players will see their ski trails from earlier in the course running horizontally across the track. So how do we get around this? Well, if we still want to keep track of the trails in a 2D texture, we'll have to take individual pieces of our track and remap them into that 2D space. Then we've just got to find a way to translate our current world position to a corresponding point in our texture. This process of projecting a 2D image onto a 3D object is called UV mapping, and it's a critical tool in the world of 3D graphics. Continuing along with the level design, I worked out a few of the finer details on the landscape and began adding some props for visual reference. Um, by the way, you might notice I've been using a more standard third-person camera here, and it's something I've been experimenting with since it's so much easier to test with, and honestly I can't really say I miss the Unreal's camera system all that much. Also, I should mention the white square in the bottom right is the minimap, and yes, that's broken too. So my next task was this whole ice spike section with these big icy glacier spiky things. And I actually did all of the placement of these big props in Blender since I've been finding that workflow much easier. Then I threw in some backdrop mountains I made in World Machine and this I think definitely helps sell the scale of the level. I wanted to diversify the props along the side of the track, so I went about dicing a bunch of cubes and doing my best to shape them into something that resembles a cliff wall. 
The idea here is that I'm creating reusable pieces that I can shape to different areas of the level. Then I kind of sculpt the terrain around them to make them look more natural. And here is the end result. They're not quite blizzard quality rocks, but I think they'll do the trick for now. Also, guys, I've just gotta say, I'm kind of obsessed with Blender. This was a screen recording I made at like 4 a.m. because I was stoked on this geometry node setup where I could like paint snow onto things. I didn't end up using this method, but it was fun to experiment with. But there were a lot of Blender creations I did end up using. I found myself sculpting a lot of wooden things. And here is the updated version of the fences. Then I made the starting line banner that I can add customizable text to. Uh, it's really about time I added some actual markers to the start and the end of the level. And I made those little safety nuts you see on the side of ski courses. I also worked on updating the look of the trees, and eventually I'd like to move all of the props away from the low poly look with the hard edges, but it's certainly a lot more work to do so. For example, I spent about a full day modeling, sculpting, and baking this tree, and I'm still trying to speed up this process. So something I wanted to do for a while was address the item distribution mechanic. Up until this point, the items were awarded when you run through these flags, but this mechanic should be more satisfying and give you some kind of visual feedback that something just happened. So I dug deep and did some real intense brainstorming, and that's when I came up with this genius and totally unique idea. What about a box? All right, all right, so it's not the most unique mechanic, in fact, it's pretty much exactly what they use in Crash Team Racing, but I really wanted something you could smash into, and what smashes better than a wooden crate? I mean, just look at this footage from Crash Bandicoot. It's hard not to make sound effects when you jump on these things. So after importing my glorious wooden crate into Unreal, I used the built-in fracture tools to prepare my wooden crate for its explosive debut. Then we line them all up, and... All right, that's kind of cool but the pieces are exploding a bit too aggressively. Let's change a few things. Okay, now the explosion's a bit cleaner, but I don't like when all the pieces explode in front of you. I'm not gonna lie, I spent a few full days working on these explosions. And yes, I made a lot of sound effects. And here is where it ended up. I added some wood particles to the explosion, as well as some distance fading effects so that pieces of the box never obscure too much of the camera. And the last change I made to the boxes was adding these squishy little jump animations. So do you guys remember in the first devlog where I drew up this whole diagram about skiing posture and then someone in the comments politely said, uh, actually that's completely wrong. Well, I finally got around to fixing that issue, but it required me to visit my old nemesis control rig. Why is his foot doing that? It makes no sense. I will say, while I find Control Rig to be one of the most frustrating and least documented things about Unreal, it does get the award for the most entertaining bugs. But I did eventually figure it out, and here you can see the character actually leaning with the slope, and it looks a lot more natural now, so thank you to everyone who pointed that out in the original video. So with my confidence on a high, after tackling a control rig issue, I made some tweaks to character movement. I think I'll be forever tweaking these values, but I did make significant changes to the turn controls and it's much snappier now. I also messed around with some baked particle effects for the snow that gets kicked up when you're skiing. But it's still a far cry from the soft, fluffy plumes of snow in Grand Mountain Adventure. So I'll be back to work on this more in the future. Then I got back to level design, specifically the forest sequence. The idea here was to have a wooded area with a bunch of really tall trees and branching paths. I wanted it to kind of feel like you're lost in the woods. After populating the forest, I had something that looked like this. Now, you might be wondering what all these little white triangles are. Well, those are a new addition to help the AI because that was broken too. My previous implementation of the AI could only ever follow a single path. So when they got to these forks in the road, they would just kind of spin around in a circle endlessly. My simple solution to this was to add these box triggers that have references to different child paths and tell the AI when to change tracks. Currently the AI chooses a path completely randomly, which works fine, but it could certainly take more things into account in the future if, say, it was pursuing an enemy with an item or something. Then I got to the tunnel area that I mentioned earlier in the video. I actually changed this one up quite a bit from the original drawing and decided to add these falling icicles to the cave roof. The first thing I did was add a spawner that would pick a set of random locations on the ceiling. I want to give players some indication about which icicle is going to fall next. So I added the shaking animation and had them start dropping snow to signal that they're about to fall. 
Getting them to respawn after falling was surprisingly difficult. I think I crashed Unreal about 50 times that day. And similarly to the boxes, I had to do a lot of fine tuning to make sure that the effects weren't too distracting. So how I've got them working right now is that when they hit the ground, they explode and any player within a certain radius of that impact will be knocked out. But I still think there's more things we could do with this, so let me know in the comments if you have any ideas. All right, so this next part was pretty fun. It was time to get started on the big jump. I kind of just modeled the size of this jump in Blender and hoped that I could make it work by adjusting the strength of the boost pads. All right, so here we go. First test run and... Okay, clearly that is too much. Let's turn things down a bit. All right, here we go. Round two and still too much. But wait, where did you come from? See you back at the lodge. But after a couple of attempts, I did get the jumps calibrated in a way that all the AI were landing properly. Or, you know, most of them. Finally, it was time to work on the finale sequence of the level, the avalanche. I made this portion of the track significantly wider since I want to leave a decent amount of room to dodge the boulders. I carved out some trails in the snow for the boulders to roll down, but I didn't really end up using these much. Then I added the boulders around the track in Unreal. Those little pink arrows indicate which direction they're going to be launched. After that, I actually recorded the entire physics simulation of the boulders rolling down the hill using a tool called Take Recorder. Then, using the resulting animation, I can start the boulders at different times and create a nice loop. The reason I used an animation sequence for these boulders instead of having real-time physics is simply because it's much easier to keep networked multiplayer clients in sync this way. I'm not trying to build Rocket League over here. Anyway, this is what it looks like currently, and admittedly this sequence still needs some work. The boulders kind of come out of nowhere, and it looks a little sparse. So again, if you have any ideas of how I could make this section better, let me know in the comments below. Alright, so some of the very last things I worked on, I modeled these air balloons, and I'm kind of excited to put some funny advertisements on these. I want some of them to be connected to the backstories of some of the characters. Uh, more on that in a future devlog. Additionally, I made these little ice bikes that stick out of the ground and freeze you when you run into them. And they spin you around like a banana peel does in Mario Kart. And there you go. We broke a lot of things, but we fixed a lot of things, and I think the game is much better off for it. I've still got a lot of work to do on this, but I'm pretty confident now that this will be the first level available for playtesting once I get to that stage. Also, just a reminder that the game is now listed on Steam, so if you haven't already, please consider wishlisting it. Thank you so much for watching, until next time.